So it's the last day, so let's have a look around at some airframes. And I'm with um, Adam from Riggy Tech. Um, Riggy. <laughs> it says Riggy on the side. Is it Riggy? Okay, all right. It's Riggy. It's, it's Riggy. It's Riggy. Now, plainly, this is a separate lift thrust. Yes. Um, but can we walk around? Can Absolutely. We, why? Why is this any better or different or special? Or let me let me say it's it's different. Definitely, I think uh, the key thing here is that this is a cargo drone. It's a package delivery drone. We built it from the ground up around the package. So uh, kind of like a Phantom is a, is a flying camera. This is a flying box. Um, and the key part of that is basically the giant cargo hold. Okay. The giant empty rectangular cargo hold. That is the key of the system. So you've made a Hercules, really? Exactly, exactly. What transports uh, packages? Hercules. And Big trucks. Trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and what's it made of? So this one here, this is the one that we brought here to Tanzania. Much of it is done in 3D printed plastic. Um, that's another part of our philosophy. Um, especially for cargo where we have to be flying every day many flights for long periods of time to make it worth it we need something that'll last something that's robust something that can be maintained locally if uh, if you have to send it back to europe every uh, three weeks uh, after a few hundred flights it's just not going to be sustainable you said is that robust you said robust yes how do you know it's robust how do we know it's robust um like any other drone company, uh, we have uh, we've been doing quite a bit of testing, and that testing doesn't always uh, result in successful uh, flights, as you can imagine. Um, so, uh, well, for instance, this airframe. Then, how many hours has this airframe got? I and mean, it's not too dented and knocked. Uh, this one, um, this airframe, couple uh, couple hundred hours, I think. Okay. Um, and now, and with the sh with the same body. With much of the same body and i think <laughs> you know what though that's that's kind of the key right that's, okay uh, that dents happen um uh, things do break uh if you have to again send it back to get it fixed it doesn't work if you can print a part and whatever was broken you just kind of replace it yourself on site uh this thing will be sustainable that's what we've been doing um so yeah there's a few parts so have you got change. have you got sacrificial bits then as it were on here have you worked to that point where you know that'll generally break so we'll make that part easy to replace of course of course i think um i mean things that break usually it's a hard landing or something like that so the whole bottom of the drone is um is made to be replaced made to be essentially snapped in and out um that also helps us adapt to different kinds of payloads that might be needed in the future. Uh, this one here, you see that the front opens and the package is put into the front. This is for applications where you can land and somebody can take something out and put something back in. Sometimes you're not going to want the drone to land. So we can make another bottom with, uh, with an automatic opening flap and then the drone hovers a couple meters off the ground. You open, the package falls out and the drone leaves. Um, all of that is possible because the payload bay is on the bottom, it's in the middle, it could be swapped out. And so we said it's got this big payload bay. How do you measure things? By uh, volume or by weight that you carry? What, what sort of things can you carry with this? And well, how far, all the numbers, how high, how fast? <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, I mean, as anyone who, uh, who's uh, shipped uh, packages at Christmas uh, to their friends knows, you pay both, you pay weight and you pay volume. Volume is a key here, 15 liters of space. The shape is also fairly important. It's a basically a large shoebox, and the weight is two to three kilograms. Well, I was gonna ask you that. Are, are they, there must be standards for uh, uh, postal parcels. Would this fit a standard size parcel, parcel X, whatever it is? We're hoping that there will be a standard for aerial parcel delivery. Oh, okay. Um, that said, I mean, in logistics actually, Containers are very, very standardized. Postal boxes, um, have you ever seen the back of a UPS truck? Yeah, it's yeah. a disaster. There's yeah, yeah, things yeah. of every shape and size in yeah. there. But usually they're rectangular. Um, and that's why, you know, having a drone with somewhere in the middle, there's some really awkwardly st shaped, strange space that you can put uh, your small, tiny package in because it was made to fit a camera. That's not going to be practical for cargo. Um, Something like this, where the space is very large, it gives you flexibility. Of course, if your new application is to deliver some very, very specific thing that is actually wider or, or longer, swap out the bottom, design a different bottom made for that type of package, 
So when you say swap out the bottom, do you mean from say this line here? I mean, well, what point does can can it change mode, as it were? Uh, pretty much exactly that. the The core of this drone, I mean, the core of the of this drone is up here. You know, uh, all the intelligence, the autopilot, uh, all the electronics, they're up on the top here. Um, so really, everything that flies is here. Below is basically the cargo hold, the big box. So right off this line, slice off the bottom, put a different bottom. So what's the model then? Start producing these in by the thousand and have them everywhere? Uh, of course, uh, you know, everyone's got a dream. Uh, we're going to scale up and build thousands and all that. I think what's actually more important in cargo delivery is to be flying by the thousands of hours of flights with a drone. Um, it's not going to make sense. Just explain that again a little bit to me. I wasn't, what, Sorry. what do you mean by it? No, <laughs> no, it's okay. Say, I'm, let I'm... me say that again. I think in cargo delivery, what's key is not necessarily to have millions of drones everywhere, but it's for those drones to be flying. Okay. Um, yeah. Mapping drones, maybe you buy one, you fly it three times a month uh, for your project, and then you spend the rest of your time digitizing and all of this. Cargo drones, they're only useful. That's a really if good point, cargo. isn't it? It's it's uh, like airline, isn't it? 747s. They're only making money if they fly for something like 20 hours out of the 24 hours a day. Exactly. So it's got to really, keep going. That's really the model. It needs to be flying. It needs to be going back and forth every day. So this is the market that's going to test reliability properly. Absolutely. Reliability, maintainability. Um, if you have to, you know, get rid of your, uh, uh, replace your drone every hundred flights, and I know uh, a lot of mapping drones, they have one, two hundred flights, uh, if it's a good quality one, mm. a couple dozen if it's mm. a bad quality one. Mm. We hope that we're doing a couple dozen flights a day. Um, in a month, we're averaging, we're thinking about a hundred flights a month for. But a drone. you've got to have people at the end of wherever the end is ready to put something in it to go back again. I mean, it's exactly. a bit more than... Uh... Exactly. I think uh, you, that's also a fantastic point, is this is a drone. Sure, everybody likes the physical thing, but that's not really the key here, actually. Um, if you're doing cargo delivery, you really have to rethink the entire workflow from scratch. Um, uh, compared to mapping, compared to imagery, where you have one person here with their drone, the drone takes off, they see it, then it comes back at the same place. Cargo, radically different, because you have one location and you have a second location. What does that mean? Not only are there two people, those two people both need to know what's happening. Um, they need to communicate with the drone, so one ground station on one radio is not going to work. The, Air traffic control needs to know where it is as well because this drone is going uh, 50, 80 kilometers away. Um, how are they going to know? On the, you know, it can't be the person sitting here sending the drone. It has to be connected. You have so, to be so is this almost the pointless part of the piece? I know it's got to work. It's got to be reliable. You've got to make it. Yeah. It's the more important piece. Is the how does it stay in? Okay, you go, okay, you make it perfectly so it can do a thousand hours and that's all good. Yeah. But that's no good if there's no system within which it can operate. Exactly. Uh, does DHL say our entire business is based on trucks? Is based on motorcycles? Of course not. Um, you know, the, the UPS brown the truck is maybe very identifiable and it's great for branding, but it's not the truck that makes their business. It's logistics. It's the way they shuffle packages all over the world in different places um, that's what we're working on is integrating in logistic systems thinking cargo first operations moving moving these packages all around that's the key and the software you build to make that efficient is the key yeah and this uh you know this month this is the drone yes next and then year, the next it's going to be a smaller one uh with uh uh with you know a multi-copter style the year after that it might be a giant cargo drone don't hold me to that roadmap, huh? but yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the vehicle that's. It's important. still got to work within a system. It's the software. It's yeah. the system. It's it's the, the the operational philosophy around cargo drones, cargo first. Mm, so, okay, so the the, the body is basically three D printed, and this must be foam, isn't it? Cut that's foam in there. Yeah. Uh, our, our viewers will be in, in into this into the text. So what's what's inside it? What can we look inside? <laughs> Are we allowed to look inside? Uh, uh, not today. Yeah. Not, not today. today. Uh, yeah. No. Um, but I what mean, what flight stack are you using? What flight stack are we using? Uh, we are based on PX Form, okay. uh, so we are reusing a lot of open source stuff. Things that exist, we're using it. Um, 
as far as it can go. And of course, we got to develop our own secret sauce, but especially we're taking everything that works. That's great. That's been developed by, you know, Clever thousands people. of great people yeah. around yeah. the world. Um, but then we have to adapt it to cargo. And then um, the autopilot, what, right, if you don't mind me asking? You do mind me asking? You know what? I do mind you <laughs> ask. I do mind you asking, and not because it's a, it's a secret actually, but because we're using one now. We might be using a different one. Okay. Next month. All right. That's uh, a good point. It's, yeah, okay. it's not the core of the drone. Um, it's a, it's a, an autopilot that uh, that can run PX4, right? So. Okay. Okay. There's, but, I wouldn't say there's anything revolutionary on that side. But immediately, so if, I, if you're driving the company towards the sort of backbone system behind the, the, the actuality of delivery and you want to have lots of these in Africa, couldn't you be very benevolent and open source the airframe design and then allow people to uh, to, to, to join your system and then that, that would be where you'd get your return? I don't think it's benevolence to be honest. I think it's it's almost key actually. Um, is it a question of open sourcing, you know, licensing models and all that? I'm not a lawyer, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But what is absolutely No, I don't important, understand it either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, is, what is key is that the drone can be locally maintained. Yeah, well, and, that's, where I was, that's where I was going with that. If you, you know, if, yes. you, if you could, because obviously here in Africa, just getting stuff takes ages. You know, our, our team, I think that's, that's maybe one of the strengths is our team is coming from, um, has seen this. We're coming from, uh, you know, uh, Oriol is, uh, was working at MSF for several years, working in the middle of Papua New Guinea, trying to get uh, uh, packages out to remote villages. Uh, David's been uh, selling uh, hundreds of drones for Sensefly here in Africa, in charge of the whole market here. Um, I've been working, uh, I started an NGO two years ago, we Robotics, whose goal is to basically use technology in, in, in outreach areas, middle income countries, democratize the tech. Um, and you see time and again, super fancy expensive equipment donated mm. to a hospital or a mm. school somewhere mm. uh, in a middle income country broken after a week because it wasn't thought to uh, to work locally and it wasn't thought to be maintained locally so we're completely changing that these drones they're made to be repaired here they're made to be manufactured here as much as we can um, so that they stay here. We can't ship them back to Switzerland every uh, few hour, a few days of operation. They need to stay here, they need to fly. The parts need to be available. And if those parts, you know, if we have to uh, be shipping parts all over the world, maybe it makes more sense to just have a 3D printer here and have them built here. Mm. Well, I mean, you, you might get that use case where, some, that, as you suggest, that special bit of cargo that's shaped like a whatever needs that special pod and exactly. you just make the pod here rather than waiting all the time for it to come from overseas. And... Exactly. I mean, 3D printing is not, you know, you can't pretend it's going to completely change. Uh, it's going to be the only way that you build anything. Um, I think it is a, it does give us certain new opportunities though. Um, well, I think, us... um, I guess people overseas that watch this will be thinking, yeah, but why then wouldn't you just make a word or something like that? But get, and I'll jump in here, but just mm -hmm. getting that wood here is hard. <laughs> Even yeah. getting that is hard. So yeah. in some ways getting reels of plastic is easier than, 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 than moving those sheets of wood and yeah. balsa and ply and all that sort of thing. In some places it is. In other places, you know, wood might be easier to get. Um, in other places, what, uh, you know, other markets, what they want is the sleek carbon fiber, uh, super, uh, super fancy drone. And, and we'll have that. Um, this is really just a, sh it's a showcase here in Tanzania, uh, in the Mwanza area, it makes sense to 3D print this drone. Um, in Dubai, maybe it'll be a fiberglass uh, carbon fiber. Um, but that, I mean, that's it's, that's it's, a kind of in some ways that's a bad example, isn't it? Because Dubai is basically like I don't know what the longest flight out of there is, but it's 18 hours from anywhere. If 18 hours is the longest flight, it's yeah. three hours out of, of Europe for parts. It's of course that's a place um, where you're just going to be able to get whatever you want. It's also the airport that yeah. everything goes through. Yeah, um, yeah. Really, you have to think about the logistics at the base of. Uh, so of is that really your secret sauce? Not not this. It's the logistics. We're a logistics company, uh, absolutely, and I think um, we're not a drone maker. Uh, we're not going to sell you a mapping drone. Um, we are thinking logistics first, cargo delivery first. We're not going to get into making motorcycles, of course. It is drone based, um, but this is a logistics system. It's a way to get packages around. It's not. Um, it's not a drone, I'd say. 